Okay. Turn off the cell phone. Oh, yes. Uh, please mute your cell phones. Or if your ringtone is especially obnoxious, please turn your phone off. Um, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this second uh, session of the SPS 2018 Symposium and Workshop. And the sign-in sheet is available for those who missed it this morning. Yes, if you're, if you're new or you didn't sign in this morning, uh, there is still the sign-up sheet, so please do sign in. And then you'll get all the uh, attachments and presentations. With any luck at all. But at least at least you'll know that it's our fault and not your fault. If you don't sign up, then you have no hope. There. Does that sound okay? Okay, good. So, uh, this afternoon, uh, we have uh, two uh, uh, activities. One is a workshop uh addressing the subject of the recently approved and initiated uh, Decadal International Academy of Astronautics uh, study group uh, on the question of solar energy from space. Uh, in addition, um, uh, Professor Dong has uh, kindly agreed to give the uh, presentation that Professor Huang was going to give. Uh, he, for reasons which are a complete mystery, so both Letters of invitation went to Tokyo, to, to Beijing, at the exact same moment. And one of them resulted in a visa, and the other one did not result in a visa. I, it's completely I I indecipherable. I have no idea. But uh, before we begin the discussion on the, um, the Academy Study Group, I would like first uh, to offer the floor uh, to uh, Professor Dong uh, to um, make the presentation that would otherwise have been from Professor Huang. John, there was a statement earlier about putting a star by your name to indicate something. Okay, uh, just to repeat that, thank you, uh, Joe. So uh, earlier I had said that if you're interested in participating in the uh, International Academy of Astronautics study group that's getting started and which we'll be speaking about uh, after this presentation. Uh, please put a, an annotation of some sort, a star or a circle with a check mark or something like that next to your name in the, on the sign-up sheet uh, so that I'll know that you're, uh, you're willing to volunteer for that. Okay, very good. Please. Thank you. And uh, you, Thank you, you, you know, Mac, it's just down, up, okay, down. this one. Okay. Forwards and backwards. Can and I use the uh, laser? This one's a little bit. Okay. Okay. Try. Okay. Thank Kay. you. Excuse me, could you spell your name? My name. W uh, Bell. D O N G. D O N G. Last name. My first name is Shui. Okay. Yeah. But the presentation is from, uh, from Wang Li. Yeah. As Joan said, uh, because of the personal reason of Wang Li, he cannot be here. So uh, I will show the slide to everybody here. Notice that, notice that I said uh, show because uh, I cannot explain this uh, presentation. I just uh, received it last day. And uh, perhaps I will give a few words about it. now. Uh, the title is Space, Space Solar Power Development in China and the Proposed Roadmap. Uh, some of you may know that in 2014, a, a lot of people gathered in China and uh, discussed the... Discuss. He has to be able to see the screen too. Okay. It's okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Discuss the SPS, and we proposed a roadmap for the development of uh, China. Uh, and I will give brief introduction in three parts. Now first is the uh, WPT. Now uh, we are all familiar with this slide, 
and uh, this one is Professor Wang Xiji, and he had I uh, also carry with me a video from uh, Professor Wang. Maybe sometime we will we will show it we're to all of. It, we're going to show it tomorrow. Right? Yeah, tomorrow. During the the fiftieth anniversary uh, commemoration. Fun. You have the final version. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. And some of us may be familiar with Professor Li Ming. And this is another one, uh, Professor Li from Shanghai. He is the first one in China to introduce the uh, concept of SPS to China. And in uh, 2010, the first SPS technology development seminar was held in Beijing. And in the next year, Chinese Energy and Environment Summit was held in Beijing. And in last, uh, last year, the second SPS Technology Development Seminar was held in Beijing also. And I myself was in this seminar. And in 2000, 2014, a Xiangshan Science Conference was held in Beijing. Uh, perhaps you know that Xiangshan Science Conference was the very famous high-tech uh, national science conference in China. And I myself also was, uh, was there. And in 2016, uh, Expo 2020 organizer held a seminar on Dubai. Custer, uh, led by led by Professor Wang, joined the meeting. And let's come to the second part: uh, SPS research in China. Since two thousand and eight, some research project has been sponsored by China organizer, uh, China uh, government such as such as China National Space uh, Administration, National Net Natural Science Foundation of China, and the China Academy of Science. And myself also applied one project from uh, NSFC. So this, this is the multi Rotary joins SPS named Mr. Mr. SPS. And I also always regard this name as very adaptive, very proper, because uh, you know the energy from the sun, sun means uh, a gentleman. And we use the Mr. name it. It's a very proper title. So I ca also call uh, 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 Always called it Mr. SPS. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So it, uh, <laughs> yes, but is there a Mrs. SPS? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when Anand is from the lunar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the concept uh, system of the Mr. SPS. And. Now, we come to the proposed SPS roadmap. It was carried out in 2014. And uh, more than 100 experts from almost 50 organizations of China take part in the discussion. And we have a roadmap of the development of uh, SPS in China, and, and you know that there is a two important uh, milestone of this of this roadmap. The first is about uh, in uh, 2030, we will demonstrate uh, megawatts level SPS in space, and after two th 2050, the gigawatts level SPS will be operating in space. And before that, there, there will be three uh, different, there will be three different uh, steps 
to develop the technologies or demonstration. So we call we call this roadmap three small steps and two big steps. <laughs> yeah, come back. I will show that some detail of the Megawatts SPS development. Uh, it's about, uh, it will be after 2035 uh, megaw uh, megawatts level experimental SPS. Uh, now, it's an original system and this is the megawatts system. And then we will develop a lot, develop uh, many, many uh, key technologies such as assemble, uh, mechanical and electronic integrated analysis, and uh, distributed control and uh, vibration suppression. So three part of the three part of the system is dominant. The first is the solar cell area. And the second is the construction, main construction. And the second is the power transmitting antenna. Uh, so it concerns different, uh, different uh, voltage level. Manage and uh, distribution. Uh, about 100 volts and uh, 500 volts and uh, 5,000 volts. And this is the microwave power transmission system. And uh, because it is the megawatts is uh, the diameter of the transmitting uh, transmitting antenna will be hundred of meter. And the receiving surface will be about four, uh, five thousand. So the BCE will be not so high, only about ten percent. So, um, and I don't know if you prefer the question of the antenna or the antenna itself. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Would you like to wait until the end for questions, or would you like them as we go? Uh, you may ask a question at any time, yeah. Uh, but not, but I think uh, uh, perhaps I cannot answer it. I will try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So 100 meters, is it for uh, what uh, level of system? You said transmission antenna. Yeah, the diameter is uh, uh, one, 100 to 200 meters. And the power level? The power, uh, transmitted power. Oh, I think um, I can't remember. I will, I will give it the day after tomorrow. Yeah. And is this geostationary or geosynchronous? Mm -hmm. Or somewhere else? Another orbit? Uh, sorry. Which, which orbit? Which orbit? Uh, GE, also GEO. So the BCE is not so high. Also GEO or, or orbit. What's the received power? Received? On the ground. On the ground. Uh, the diameter of it is 5,000 so meters. How many? How many watts? Oh. One, one megawatts. About one megawatts. Yeah. Okay. Five point eight gigahertz. Five point eight gigahertz. Yeah, that's right. Then it's probably real. I mean, it's not necessarily. It's not right away. One megawatt can go to zero right away. It's probably your megawatt experiment. You mean a lot of uh, transmit uh, more transmitted power should be needed for this one. Yes, I remember. It, it, it's more than uh, uh, the transmitted power may be more than ten meg megawatts. Ten meg more than ten megawatts microwave power transmitted. This is how to build, set up the system. The first uh, three step. The first we will give the basic power system and the Men, men's uh, construction, and then we will add the 
transmitting antenna, and then we will expand the solar array, solar cell array. And this is the this is the main structure. And high efficiency thin film solar array will be needed. Uh, several key effects on SPS planning. The first is launching and commercial space, and a round trip orbit, manufacturing and assembling on orbit will be considered. Okay. Can, can you, what, what do you, what does it mean, a round trip orbiter? A round trip. What, what does that mean? Reusable? I think. Reusable, yeah. yeah. Uh, reusable, and also it will from the LEO to the GEO and come back mm -hmm. to take the, take the construction of the, uh, take some part of the SPS and once, once again to the GEO and come back. Oh. Yeah, transport. Mm -hmm. I have a question also. Can you go back one step? If the uh, high efficiency thin film solar array is what is your projected this one? efficiency from solar insulation no, to forward. power output? What is high efficiency in other words? This one. How high? The thin film, EV. Oh, sorry, I, 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 I can't get you. How uh, high would, okay, thin film solar array. Solar array, high the efficiency. How high is your efficiency? Efficiency. That you're uh, thinking, anyway. 1%. No, this, this I, uh, I, I cannot give the figure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. 20%. Are you able to state the technology? Is it uh, cadmium telluride or something other? Uh, copper, indium, gallium, sulfide? Do you know the technology of the photovoltaic? Uh, you mean the technology the status at present? The material. Material. So material, yeah. Uh, I think there, there will be some slide about material in the next uh, part. <coughs> yeah, this is the conclusion of the Xiangshan conference. The first is enha enhanced the key technology research and optimized the system scheme of SPS by technology innovate. The second is utilize the Chinese space station and any space flight probability to carry out the key technology of space demonstration in space. Uh, priority key area areas of SPS which will be well which will break through in the next decades. The first space super light modular structure and distributed control technology. Second, the large-scale thin-film solar array, spreading and current collecting technology. Protection of space, large power component, high voltage discharging, high efficiency wireless power transmission technology. Now, uh, Innovation of advanced material will play a very important role in the future SPS. I think it, it will concern some aspect of SPS. The first is the uh, uh, first is high performance protection materials for thin film solar array, and the second insulation materials with nonlinear conduct conductivity using high voltage component. And then carbon-based conductor materials or high temperature superconductor. And the fourth, large power current carrying fraction pile materials based on C modified. 
Now, the summary. SPS is one of the important potential renewable energy ways in the future of China and the world. The development of SPS will bring the innovation of many advanced te technologies. Widely international collaboration, innovation, commercialized patent, and more effort are very important. So that's all. Thank you. One gigawatt SPS. No, for one, for mass. Megawatt, mass. Megawatt. What is how, it? how many kilograms? What's mass. the weight? It may not say mass. Mass. Uh, <laughs> one megawatt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. One slide of the concern this question. I think uh, it may be uh, there. No. the the two, the three step building. Yeah, this one, this one, uh, 200 tons. 200 tons total, is that right? Yeah, yeah, for the megawatts, okay. SPS, yeah. And uh, also, can you comment, before this megawatt demonstrator, it was the chart, how many demonstrations you're planning to do. Can you comment maybe if anything was done to demonstrate at the ground already? Ground, yeah. Uh, Uh, it's a difficult question because for me, I, I was focused on microwave MPT. I think ex except for uh, MPT, there should be the deployable structure and uh, assembling technology and also the high voltage handling and uh, management all of this should be demonstrated on ground. Is it anything uh, done already or what uh, to do like in the near future, like five years? Only in the sum of the MPT. Yeah. Some of the experiments have been carried out on ground in the laboratory. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. you. Uh, have it to get, I know it's hard to get funding for this research, but one of the things we've been talking about now for, I guess it's 2011, is the concept of using a demonstration power satellite say between one and 10 megawatts in size that can provide emergency power to the ground in a disaster area. And you need a way to get the power down without in creating a giant installation. So it would almost have to be done by, by a, uh, a diffuse laser system of some kind where the laser would spread out to maybe twice the solar intensity or something like that. And you know, we thought of that after the Japanese earthquake in 2011. Uh, has anyone discussed that over there as a means of making it more, use, in making the demonstration satellite immediately useful in the cases of like a disaster? Uh, this is the one of the only one of the application of SPS, uh, but it's very difficult for disaster because you know in a disaster everything should be destroyed. Right. Yeah. It, uh, if we if we try to uh, lay out the rectangle before disaster, right, right. it will be destroyed. So the if we lay out it after disaster, I think it's. Uh, we have no time, perhaps. So you, if you had a, a system of portable panels that you could just lay out in the ground and, and light it up, that would give you the pow power almost instantly. That's something they should consider, because we talked a lot about yeah. it in 2011. Uh, oh, thank you. Some of the utility scale 
26 acres to a megawatt, no, five megawatts to 26 acres of ground, takes about a week to improve. So I have to scale the construction time and space. No, we're just talking about putting the flat on the ground. There's por portable panels that can be brought in by helicopter. Let's not get into a working yeah. discussion, gentlemen. Right. Yep, yeah, please. Your demonstration satellite, is it actually funded and actually has a schedule for deployment and test? <laughs> uh, um, it has not been uh, finally determined. And myself cannot answer this question. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. About, how about the three small steps? Uh, there's two big steps yeah. and three small steps. It's about uh, the it's about the technology development and the demonstration. I think uh, there are space assembly. I remember the first day to demonstrate the technology in the laboratory on the ground. And the second, we will use the uh, uh, balloon or some, or some other platform. A question on, on that, I was just going to ask. Could, is that feeding power? Could, could we get to the answer to the first question first? Sorry. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> the, question, the first question was, so, for the, the, we, so far, the two big steps are proposed but not, no money yet. I would, uh, following up on Dr. Schubert's question, I was asking for the three small steps. Small, are small they, steps. Are they yeah. uh, approved? Do they have a budget yet? Budget. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I understand, <laughs> but I can't answer this question. Okay, 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 <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's also very hard to read this chart. Can you please read the three small steps, let's say 2020? What is planned for that? 2020. The WP technology demonstration on an aerostat. Yeah. Oh, aerostat? It's, air, it's an airship. And is that beaming power? Aeroboat. Or beaming power up to the airship? No, sorry. Is, for the aeroboat, is that collecting solar power, beaming that down to the ground? Or is it beaming power up to the aeroboat? You, you mean go which up, down, to out? Yeah, which yeah. direction? Yeah, it will dance. Down. Yeah, from. Yeah. From the balloon to the ground. And what altitude? Uh -huh. What altitude is the aeroboat? What, what about the, the attitude? How high? <sighs> typically 100,000 feet where you get uh, get a I cannot give the. Uh, 20 kilometers. You can then. Uh, Payloads are very tiny at those altitudes. Cannot give the figure. <laughs> Anyway, yes. okay. Thank you. Could you read the other small steps, please? We cannot see uh, the letters from you. Uh, the first, in 2020, WPT Technologies demonstration on aeroboat. And uh, from 2021 to 2025 technologies demonstration in space station and uh, in 2025 space solar array module demonstration and uh, <coughs> from that time to 2030 large space assemb assembled antenna and uh, WTTPT demonstration yeah yeah you're welcome <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So I believe that uh, tomorrow Professor Dong will also present uh, his own research on the wireless power transmission uh, R&D.
So, but thank you very much for uh, making the presentation for uh, Professor Wong. Okay, so it's now officially two o'clock. <laughs> So um, now we will turn from uh, the particular, uh, na a particular national plan to the uh, more general topic of the um, uh, the more general topic of uh, the study group that I described to you briefly this morning uh, under the International Academy of Astronautics. Uh, so uh, as background. Um, So you're speaking of the Earth's magnetosphere, meaning the, 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 the magnetic field which is generated by the metallic core of the Earth's yes. rotation. It protects us. Right. Uh, to, the, to the best of my uh, knowledge of physics, uh, zero. That the, the Earth's magnetosphere is generated by a stupendously large mass of molten iron. And the kinds of power that we could possibly deliver would have no effect on it. I could calculate it, but a va vanishingly small number on the end of a very large number of zeros. Anyway, so um, in 2008, uh, several of us uh, proposed to the International Academy of Astronautics uh, Commission 3, which concerns itself with systems and technology development. A, uh, the first international assessment of uh, solar energy from space for the Earth. And the book which is being passed around uh, is the final report uh, shown here. The cover of the final report from that uh, study group. Um, uh, and it was, as, it, as the title suggests, uh, oddly enough, although uh, space solar power was invent solar power satellites as a concept uh, was invented by Peter Glazer uh, and as an, a patented idea in the late 1960s, uh, before 2008 there had actually never been any international uh, study of that subject. Uh, there had been a variety of national activities, and there were um, uh, in the early 1990s, there were a series, of, beginning in the early 1990s, a series of workshops. Uh, there was even a summer study at the International Space University. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, the first uh, summer study at the ISU on space solar power, uh, Dr. Um, uh, uh, Lee uh, Ming of uh, the Vice uh, Chair of CAST uh, was uh, one of the participants in that ISU study activity. So there was an earlier Chinese activity on space solar power uh, that uh, Dr. Lee did. Um, but uh, um, this uh, study proposed by the Academy was uh, implemented in concert with the Power Committee of the International Astronautical Federation, uh, which has organized the longest running series of international meetings on the topic of space solar power as a part of the annual uh, International Astronautical Congress. Um, we're doing it again this year uh, in uh, Bremen, Germany. Uh, 
Um, and uh, also, uh, this study was conducted uh, in uh, concert uh, with Space Canada uh, and um, uh, in cooperation uh, with a couple of other groups as well. Uh, and uh, as you'll note, when you get a chance to look at the book, uh, Space Canada was actually the uh, sponsor of the publication of the, the final report. Uh, last year, uh, I noted that it had been 10 years, and, and this was part of planning for this event, that it had been 10 years since the beginning of the past study group uh, and its completion of its report. By the way, these reports, which are called cosmic studies and cosmic reports, are usually take about 36 months to complete. And so this, uh, this started in 2008, was completed in 2011. And uh, so I proposed to the Academy uh, uh, last fall uh, formally, uh, it was approved uh, at the, uh, the spring meeting in March that there should be a decadal review and assessment of space solar power. Now, I'm hoping that this will kind of take hold and that uh, others, I'm not necessarily myself, but others will do another decadal assessment uh, in 2028, but we'll see. So. The major changes, what has changed the most since 2008, since the time we did the, uh, this first international assessment? Uh, first and foremost, which we've talked about a couple of times today already, uh, low cost launch has arrived. And a very low cost launch is now within sight. Uh, this is a fundamental change from where we were in 2008. Uh, 2008, there, was, uh, there were activities. Obviously, the Falcon 1 had flown. Uh, there were some small-scale activities related to suborbital space tourism. But there was no consensus among the, the, uh, uh, the, the aerospace uh, community that within a very few years, there would be uh, a, a, a reusable first stage uh, being flown regularly by a, a, a newcomer the aerospace community, and that costs, not prices, but costs on the order of a couple of thousand dollars per kilogram uh, would be uh, essentially achieved. So this is just a, an amazing accomplishment. Um, the kinds of numbers that are being talked about for the, um, the BFR, the Big Falcon rocket, and uh, yeah, to use the euphemism, I was there at the IAC in Australia, and I know what Elon actually said. <laughs> and it was not Falcon. <laughs> yeah, no, buy me a beer. Uh, in polite company, I'm not. Uh, and uh, I will say that the cost numbers, uh, I visited recently and gave a lecture at uh, Blue Origin on space solar power uh, about three weeks ago. And uh, the kinds of cost numbers that uh, Elon is kicking around for the BFR and the kinds of cost numbers that um, uh, Blue Origin, Bezos, is thinking about for uh, New Glenn and um, not uh, New Shepard, New Glenn, and then the, sec the then New next Armstrong. New Armstrong, thank you, Edwin, uh, are very, very similar. And they're, they're basically, they're looking at numbers for prices below $1,000 per kilogram. And this is a revolutionary change from where we were only 10 years ago. Uh, secondly, and uh, you I can call your attention to any one of dozens of uh, videos and reports and, and the literature, the changes in the applications of robotics, both terrestrial applications uh, through warehouses and mining and all these farming, everywhere. I mean, it's all underway in 2008, but it's just exploded since uh, the last decade. And the applications uh, that are emerging for space, uh, a lot of which is being done um, by DARPA, uh, for DARPA, uh, through the uh, Naval Research Laboratory and with um, uh, what used to be MDA, it's now MDA and, and uh, Space Systems Laurel. Are, are it's now space systems. SSL. SSL. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm an old timer. <laughs> I remember when the acronym had a meaning. I mean, that's <laughs> yes, right. Okay. So anyway, SSL. Uh, 
are similarly profound. And if you look at those two things and what they mean for in space assembly in the in the near to medium term, they are uh, not quite at the same point of maturity as uh, as space launch, but they're they're fast on the heels. Uh, lastly, there have been a number of new architectures and component technologies uh, which have emerged in the last uh, half a dozen years or so. I think uh, uh, 10 years ago there hadn't really been any new system concepts for a number of years. A lot of things that were being looked at in the you know, around 2007, 2008 were system concepts that had been around since the Fresh Look study. Uh, if you look at the advances that are now being made in device technologies, uh, like uh, power amplifiers and so on, those are, uh, they're not at the level of the kind of percentage improvement of, uh, of uh, the launch cost cuts, but if you look at the system level impacts of improving the efficiency of an amplifier, uh, for example on waste heat and the impacts of waste heat on electronics temperatures and the drivers for thermal and all of those things, it's a, an equally consequential improvement. Uh, next, and this was talked about a few moments ago, a, another profound change uh, is that China has now joined the international space solar power community. Uh, whereas 10, 10 years ago, that was not true. I was going to show one of my, I have a bubble chart from 10 years ago that sort of shows the, uh, it's a mind map, it shows the, the dynamics of space solar power uh, 10 years ago. And China is just this tiny little bubble with a, with a question mark in it. Um, but I decided that would be, uh, I, I could describe it instead. And that this is certainly far from the case now. Uh, and lastly, the other, the other big change recently, in the last decade, is the emergence of new space. And I put it in quotation marks. Uh, I could call it future space or, or um, a space development or some other thing, but um, but it's a it's a prof uh, over and above the uh, changes uh, due to um, the the billionaire competition to drive down the cost of launch. There is um, there's uh, uh, deep space industries and space uh, uh, resource uh, sorry um, space resources no planetary resources planetary resources. Um, Golden Spike, uh, the, all the companies that came out of the uh, Google X Prize, uh, all of the activities to basically develop um, businesses out of um, CubeSat and 2U and 3U and 5, 6U, for, U form factor sats and on and on and on. All of those are, are quite transformational in their aggregate impact on um, space development. And so I think I think those are the, for me, those are the top five things that have changed that warrant a, another, uh, another look, at least insofar as we know so far. In terms of the study group, um, the goals of the study are to uh, evaluate what role space might play in meeting the uh, energy needs of Earth for the remainder of the century, <coughs> to ex assess the technology options and their readiness and risks, to evaluate the range of novel space solar power systems concepts that have come along